I will be speaking on um, an African story of the world. And whenever I have the privilege of speaking to a distinguished gathering like this, I always make uh, three points before I talk about uh, the main issue of the day. So the first point I make is that I am very hopeful about Africa. At the end of apartheid in South Africa, Desmond Tutu was asked, you know, are you optimistic about the future of South Africa? He said, no, I am not optimistic, I am hopeful. You know, as Christians, we are people of hope. We believe that we can go beyond the shadows into the light. So, and I see this hope in Africa, for instance, I grew up in a post-Civil War Nigeria. I have seen the effects of war in places like Sierra Leone, Liberia, and Uganda. I've seen whole families and communities devastated by HIV AIDS. But in the midst of such trauma that could sap the human capacity for survival, I see many African women rise and walk again. Many Africans are walking the valley of darkness and are pummeled by storms of poverty and battered by harsh winds of change, climate change and economic deprivation and disease. But they still walk tall and triumphant. So in the midst of this, there is something about the character of people who can survive such terrible tragedies that we see in Africa. It is the power of hope translated into strength and grace. The second point also is that I do reject, along with some new voices in African history, a kind of a, a victim mentality. You know, everything, Africa is a victim of this, Africa is a victim of that, Africa is a victim of this. I do believe, however, that historical factors are also responsible for the present condition of Africa. But at the same time, uh, I think that the paternalism is not the answer to African survival. And sometimes, you know, when you watch the television and see the pictures of African children, you know, the ones rummaging in garbage, you know, the ones who are naked and wearing their skin, like a cloth, then you tend to have the impression that Africa is a land of, uh, you know, walking in the valley of darkness and misery. And sometimes the people who project this image are well-meaning. Don't get me wrong, because they want to get money from Canadians to help Africa. But uh, I say I will start a movement sometime in future if the good Lord gives me grace, that uh, if you will use any picture of anybody from Africa, you better get the permission. I learned, <laughs> I learned that recently, you know. <laughs> I learned that, you know, because I work with kids in high school. I coach soccer. And then we wanted to present a picture in the, uh, in a, you know, podcast, something like that. And they say, oh, you got to get the permission of their parents before you use their pictures. So I think we should get permission of uh, people before we use their pictures, especially when you portray them, you know. <laughs> I remember as a child, I stopped a white American from taking my picture because I was naked playing in the stream. I said, no, 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 don't do that. I will be, you'll be in trouble with that, you know? So, and I'm proud of myself for doing that. <laughs> and, and so, so that's it. Then the other point is, in the in response to climate change, that we must, as people who believe in a common humanity and a common future, we must mine into the indigenous knowledge of African people for responding to the climate change, uh, the many difficulties and problems of climate change. And that demands, that demands begin, being able to discover what can work for the people. So climate change, I hope our response, whether with regard to mitigation or adaptability, has to take into cognizance that the destiny of Africa lies in the hands of Africans. And the voices of Africans have to be listened to, especially in the small communities where you find the robust 
and uh, the, the strength and grace of survival and the wisdom of all ages. So, and I see, for instance, that this is happening in Christianity, as many of you know. Uh, Andrew Wall speaks of the resurgence of a post-missionary Christianity in Africa, such that he says that Christianity, African Christianity, should be the standard measure for the Christianity of the present age, a demonstration model of his character. That might be a bit exaggerated, but I take that, you know, coming from Africa, that is a, demonstrate, a demonstration model of the character of Christianity. So I hope this happens uh, in other aspects of Africa. Politics, economics, the social questions of the day, especially with regard to climate change, that the way Africans are responding to it should one day become a demonstration model of how it could be done. But don't get me wrong, dear friends. I think climate change is devastating Africa in a very massive way. It is weakening the capacity of Africans to generate wealth. It is decreasing the GDP of African nations. It is leading to migration and endangering national and international security. And it has affected like eight different areas which I might not have the time to develop here. Water, energy, health, agriculture, ecosystems, health, coastal zones, settlement, industry, and infrastructure as well as tourism. I just want to conclude this presentation because I have prepared to speak for 20 minutes, but I'm now told that I must speak for 10 minutes. <laughs> and I'm not good at summary, as Dennis can testify. So I always put my summary for my homily in the bulletin because I'm a priest as well. So I tell them, you can fall asleep while I speak, then you get the summary at home. So, so <laughs> I hope you don't fall asleep on me.